Hi, April like it is brought a lot of rain with it and that's why this weekend I wasn't been able to go in my garden. But I decided to spend this time making my planting layout and seeding calendar. So stay tuned to learn about when to plant what, about companion planting and about planting calendars. I linked an Excel spreadsheet in the description if you want to see my planting dates and planting layout. And if you like it, press the thumbs up. So let's begin. The first thing to decide was how many plants I need to plant for me and my wife. Over the internet, there are many informations on how much you need. I know that it all depends on where you live and how good the crop harvest will be, but I need to start somewhere, right? So I wrote down all the plants I wanted to plant and how many of them I need to fit me and my wife. An easy start. The next step was to design a planting layout. For the layout I decided to try the square foot gardening method. This is a method where you divide your raised bed into a square foot grid and plant a predefined number of plants in each square. It sounds simple and easy to make. So I found out all the numbers on how many crops I can plant in one square foot and wrote it down in the table next to the names of the plants. As you will see, basically I have three categories. Small plants, which you can plant up to 16 plants per square. Medium plants, which you can plant one plant per square and big plants, which normally occupy more than one square. But when researching on a topic, I found out about companion planting. Basically, you should plant or avoid planting some plants together to promote growth and avoid nutrient depletion in the soil. So I dug further and I found out that there is a lot of misinformation about it. Some recommending something and some stating the contrary. So I decided to filter these informations with the knowledge of my mother-in-law. And finally, it was time to make a planting layout. I started the layout of my garden, knowing that the tomatoes and cucumbers need to be under a polytunnel to promote their growth and to protect tomatoes from direct rainfall. Fortunately for me, they both like their vicinity. Next to the cucumbers I decided to plant some radishes so they will repair the cucumber beetles. Eggplants love peppers, so I planted them together and I tried to put peppers as near as possible to the tomatoes. Tomatoes also love carrots and onions, which also repels the carrot fly. So this trio must be together in my book. And because lettuce like carrots and onions, I decided to plant them in the remaining squares of the first raised bed. In the other bed, I decided to go with some bigger crops. So cauliflower and zucchini it is. And because me and my wife love corn salad, I decided to fill the gaps with it near the cauliflower. So with these three crops, almost three quarter of the second raised bed was filled. And the rest was just a matter of dedicating some space for the lettuce, cabbage, eggplant and more corn salad. In the last minute, I dedicated two slots for the radish near the zucchini, which promotes their growth. When this was done, the hard part began. When to start planting? An easy question, but with a hard answer. The short version is that you start planting when the last frost date passes. In my country, this is after the 14th of May. So I won't be planting anything until then, but I will be sowing in April. And if you're asking why, it's because plants need time to germinate and pick out of the soil. Until then, they're protected from the elements by the soil because it acts like an isolator. You can ask Google when the last frost date is in your region. And if you live in America, you'll be categorized into our zone. From which zone are you? Write it down in the comments. Fortunately for me, I have a lot of books for my climate zone regarding this topic and the knowledge of my mother-in-law. So beside the plants, I wrote down all the dates for sowing, planting and harvesting. This way, I had a better overlook on what I need to seed or plant each month. You can use this information and correct it to your last frost date to get an idea on when you will be planting. I will also attach this file into the description so you can download it. When planning for when to start planting, you must take into consideration another factor. The Maria Thun planting calendar. 
This is a calendar tracking the position of the Moon, Sun and solar planets, which influence the plant growth. In this calendar all the plants are divided in four different groups, leaves, roots, crops and flowers. And for each group you can find specific dates on which it's best to plant them. Now I have an idea on when I need to plant what, but there's a problem. If I plant all the lettuce or any other leafy crops at once, they will all mature at once and I won't be able to eat them fast enough, so they will rot and I don't want that. I want to enjoy it through the whole harvesting period, so I need to plant them in succession. That way they will mature one after another and I will have time to eat and enjoy all of them. I'm hoping that I did my calculations right, and if you're also wondering if I am, Click the subscribe button so you won't miss the update in the summer when I'll be revising my planting timing.